Okay, let's have a look at question 7 of the January 2009 D1 paper. This is the linear programming question. And um, it just jumps straight in and gives you these constraints. You don't have to think about the context in this particular question. You're just given these kind of algebraic constraints. And it says use the grid provided in your answer book to represent these inequalities graphically. So let's uh, jump in and um, and do those. So 8x plus 3y is less than or equal to 480. Let's take that one first. So 8x. Oh, I can see that this isn't working. That's better. 8x plus 3y less than or equal to 480. Now, how can we represent this graphically? Well, because we've got a number here, we can uh, do our little trick of setting x's and y's to zero um, and see what happens. So let's set x to zero. We get 8 times zero, so this gets eliminated. We're just left with 3y equals 480. So y must equal 480 over 3. Type it in on the calculator, it's 160. Same thing, uh, setting y to 0. This bit disappears, we've got 8x equals 480. So, um, 8x equals 480. That means x is 480 over 8. So that's 60. So we get this coordinate, 60 and 160. No, excuse me, that's completely wrong. We get 0, when x is 0, y is 160. And when y is 0, x is 60. So we get these two coordinates. We want to now plot those on the grid. So 0, 160 is up here, and 60, 0 is here, and we're going to draw a line through like that, and then we're going to label it. Don't forget to label your line. Uh, it's this one, 8x plus 3y equals 480. If you forget to label your line, it can get quite confusing later on. Okay, let's have a look at the next line that we've got to put on there. Where has it gone? Here. 8x plus 7y equals 560. Let me change colour. 8 x plus 7 y and what was it? greater than or equal to 560 for the purposes of drawing the line we can imagine that to be an equals because we're actually drawing the line 8x plus 7 y equals 560 and then we're going to shade the region in a minute ok so setting x to 0 we get y equals and that's gone, so 560 divided by 7. That's 80. Set y uh, to 0. And we get 560 divided by 8. That's 70. So x equals 70. So we get the following coordinates 0 and 80 and y0, x is 70. Can I put those on? 70 and 0, 0 and 80, like that. Join them up in the line. Done. Um, now, we almost forgot to do the shading. So let's go back to this one probably best actually to shade as you go it doesn't really matter but let's have a look 8x plus 3y 
is less than or equal to 480. So we ask the question, well, which bit are we going to be interested in if it has to be less than or equal to 480? Now, a way to think about this is to uh, choose some ridiculously big numbers for x and y. Now, let's let's choose a number that will certainly be up in this region, maybe a, th a thousand and a thousand. So eight times a thousand plus three times a thousand. Is that going to be greater than or less than 480? Well, clearly it's going to be greater than 480. So if we pick big numbers in this region up here, it's going to come out bigger than 480. That means the region we're interested in is going to be this side here. So we're going to exclude all of this stuff by shading it in like that. Exclude that region. And we'll try the same thing with this line. 8x plus 7y is greater than 560. And let's pick some big numbers again. Imagine we're way up here in this this region here. Imagine we picked a thousand and a thousand. We'd end up with eight thousand plus seven thousand. And clearly, that's greater than five sixty. So the inequality is true up here on the this side of the line, rather than this side of the line. So clearly, it's false on the other side. So we're going to exclude the bit where it's not true. So so far. We've excluded below and above these two lines, so this is our region sort of taking shape here. Let's look again at uh, what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, the next um, inequality we're trying to shade is this one. Y is greater than or equal to 4x. So let's write that down. Um, maybe choose another colour y is greater than or equal to 4x. And for purposes of drawing a line, you can imagine that it's y equals 4x. That's the line we're trying to draw. Now this time we can't set 1 to 0 because everything would come out of 0. Imagine if we said y equals 0. Well, that would mean that 4x was 0, so x was 0 as well. That wouldn't help us much. So we're going to think of this in a slightly different way. Um, what I would do is uh, pick a point for x and see what y comes out as. So imagine we take, uh, I don't know, let's say 20, x equals 20. So what would y be then? It would be 4 times 20, which is 80. So therefore we have this point 20 and 80, so we can put a cross through that. And either use common sense, well, let's say your mathematical knowledge uh, you know that this line passes through the origin uh, or if you don't if you're not sure why let's put in zero so x equals zero four times zero is also zero so we've got to be passing through the origin here and let's join those two points up and we've got a nice uh, line of y equals 4x make sure we go all the way up to the top and then label it Always good to label. Now, which region are we interested in? Y is greater than 4x. And the way I think of this is you've got your y's on this side and your x's on this side. And what's the bigger side? Well, it's the y's. Now, the y's go in this direction. That's the y direction, and that's the x direction, isn't it? And what we're saying is that the y's are greater than the x's. So that means the y stuff, which is this direction, is the bit we're interested in, where y is big. So y is bigger, and that happens up here in this direction. So all this side of the line is the bit we're interested in. So we're going to exclude the bit below where x is bigger. That's the x side here. So we'll exclude that. I hope find that a uh, 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 helpful way to understand it. That's just the way I think of it. If you think of it a different way, uh, that's fine too. Now let's just look back at our question. Only two more things. X and Y are greater than or equal to zero. So just to be safe, let's just shade in. This is the 
exclude the area where x is less than zero and down here as well now in the actual exam uh, for this particular one it's not not particularly easy to do that so I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't expect you to but that's just for the sake of our own understanding just say that these areas are also excluded so the feasible region that's left must be this because everything else has been excluded okay looking back at the question we've um, we've determined the feasible region we've represented the inequalities graphically even the uh, non-negativity constraints so we'll get all the marks there next part uh, we're given the objective function now this is the thing that tells us about uh, things like profit or loss or the thing that we're trying to maximize or minimize and it says making your method clear determine the minimum value of the function and the maximum value of the function so let's just have a look we've got this thing here and our objective function was f equals 3x plus y so we need to somehow plot this on our graph um, so let's uh, think about how we might do that now if you remember we can't just plot this straight away because we don't have a value for f, for f. so we're going to make one up and the way we generally do that is look at the coefficients of x and y so we've got a 3 and a 1 so multiply them together we get 3 so we could say let's set f to 3 and if we try to plot that, if you look down at the scale here um, you've got 10, 20, 30, 0, 20, 40 this is probably going to be too small so why don't we make it 10 times bigger, make it 30 we get 3x plus y equals 30. Let's now try and plot that. Now, the same method as we did before. Set x to 0. y then must be 30. If we set y to 0, that disappears. We get 3x equals 30. So x must be 10. So we get these two points. 0, 30 which goes here and 10, 0 which goes here and let's join them up and there we've got our objective function make sure we label that objective function because um, they want to see clearly what you've done now the reason this is helpful is it gives us the gradient of the objective function. Now as this value of f, which we set to 30, goes up, then the objective function will also move up the page. But it will move always parallel to itself. Um, not so easy for me to illustrate that with um, uh, without a ruler. But basically what we'll see is the objective function moves and goes parallel to itself as that number gets bigger and what we're looking for is as we increase the value of um, this number you don't have to do this of course in your exam it's just to illustrate that the objective line enters the feasible region down here and as it carries on moving parallel to itself will eventually leave the feasible region and you can see where it's going to leave, it's going to leave here so <laughs> I'm making quite a mess of this but I hope you can see what's happening this is going to be let's have a new colour this is going to be the minimum point that's where it enters the feasible region and that's where it leaves that's going to be the maximal point. Now, can we find out what these two points are? Well, this one is pretty obvious. You can read it straight off. It's got to be 0 and 80. So, minimal point. Zero, eighty, And the maximal point, um, that's not quite so obvious. If we join our graph really accurately, we could just read it off. 
Um, but to be on the safe side, let's solve these two lines simultaneously and um, then we'll know what this point is. So we're going to solve y equals 4x, which is that line, against 8x plus 3y equals 480. So why don't we uh, just get rid of this stuff for now and we'll do a couple of simultaneous equations. Um, what did we say? y equals 4x. So if we're solving these two, we can just substitute everywhere we see a y, we can put 4x. So we can write the top one again as 3 times 4x instead of 3y equals 480. Then we get 8x plus 12x equals 480. Excuse me. Um, yeah. And that's supposed to be an x. So therefore 20x equals 480. So I'm dividing 480 by 20, we get x equals 24. If x equals 24, we can find y, because it's just 4 times x, so y equals 96. So we know that that maximal point is there. 24, 96. That's the really uh, sophisticated way of doing that, if it's not obvious uh, what the point is. Now, let's just finally look back at the question. We found the coordinates of the minimum point, and we found the coordinates of the maximum point. All that's left to do is to find out the value of the function f at both of those points. And we're done. We've made our method clear, I hope, along the way, and we'll have finished the question. So that's just do that maximal point at uh, 2496 f equals well f if you remember was 3x plus y so 3 lots of 24 plus 96 168 and at the minimal point, 0, 80, f equals 3 lots of 0, that's 80, well that's just 80. So we've uh, found f at both of those points, and we've finished the question. I hope that was uh, helpful.